Okay, we're back with a brand new video. I said if On to Better Things is good, I'd do a tier list. Turns out the album is really, really good. I think it's Ian Dior's best, like, structured album. It's a really enjoyable listen. I'll bump it to a 10 out of 10. So I got a tier list pulled up. The, the ranks go from goaded all the way down to trash and skip. We're gonna go through all 15 songs, and let's go ahead and get into it. Heartbreaker, one of the more up-tempo songs. We had a few of those on the album. <laughs> I think this started off, I'll give it good, and again, I can uh, go through at the end, change things around. Wouldn't really go out of my way to play it a ton. I think there's better songs on the album that we're gonna get to. Up next, we got Is It You, uh, the intro to the album, the first song, and it kind of starts off really soft, and I like that, but then it turns up a little bit. It gets, again, more up-tempo, and the verse in that part is really, really good, and then it brings it back down. I thought the intro was really, really cool, and that alone was uh, something that impressed me and was one of the standout moments on the album. This part's sick right here. Sick, sick. sick. I, I like this song. Is it goaded, though? I feel like because it's kind of such a strange song, I don't know if like, the replay value is there for goaded, but it's definitely a standout. I'm gonna put it at great, but it has goaded potential though. I really like that song. Next up, I might, this song definitely grew on me. It's another more upbeat one. Some people might find this song a little cringe, and I think that comes with the I'm lit, but I might part on the hook where he uses like a high-pitched auto-tune. I, I thought it was unique. I thought it was catchy. I said I won't, but I'm lit. I might is going in goaded. I think this is, I think the song's replay value is a little bit higher. Is it you? I'm still gonna leave that great, but I, I think that I might move that one up. I'm not sure. Next one, Obvious with Travis Barker, and I, I like this one too. That, that tune is crazy. I love when Ian hops on that punk rock stuff. I think he absolutely kills it. Um, obviously his vocals sound way different on that one. Very, very different song. I think Travis Barker kills it. Um, I like how he just tries to fuse genres together. It's just very interesting, and I'm glad we got that on this album. So I think Ian kills it. I'm going to put it at great. Um, I think there is better, more like punk rock songs on the album. So we're going to get to those very soon. We can just skip to it. Like, let's do Hopeless Romantic next. So I'm going to put that at goaded uh, just to, to start it off here. I think it's a strange outro because like a rock song like I don't know I find this song really catchy I think it has more replay value than obvious and I think it's like just a better record than obvious um, so I have to put it above that um, this song like reminds me of like an intro to like a Disney show or something like you remember Gabe from Good Luck Charlie I can just like imagine like a montage of him just going on a rampage and then this is like the theme song to his show or some shit. Hopeless Romantic, goaded though. I love that one. I think that's my favorite that we covered so far, but we still have plenty of tracks to cover here. Next up, Options. Very, very interesting song. This and Heartbreaker, I think, are similar. You know, that's why they're next to each other on the album. Those are songs where I actually like Ian's verses more than the hook. And I don't know why I just like him rapping on those type of beats. I'll put options in good. So like I promised, next is complicated. Um, I'm gonna have to put this up at goaded. Really, really, really good replay value on this one. Music video with it. This is like Ian Dior breaking out in 2019 again. I, I love the sound that it captures. It's totally nothing's ever good enough. It's such old school Ian Dior. I, I love this one. I mean, I'm sure this is gonna be like a fan favorite on the album. So yeah, he posted a snippet for it. The song took forever to come out, um, but we finally have it. And there's a reason why it's the second song on the album because it's gonna be one of the bigger ones on the album, or at least the biggest solo song I would predict. I don't know how you're not saying complicated is top tier. Uh, I think that's the definition of a goaded song, just perfectly executed song. Um, so yeah, obviously goaded. But yeah, and just a side note, um, I'm not like ranking them left to right on the each you know section, just each you know 
each tier is where it's at. I'm not ranking them like left to right or whatever, so don't freak out. This is all subject to change, so we'll do the singles next. So Let You is a banger song. I said this back in 2021. It's on my end of the year list uh, for songs because I think this is the best song Ian dropped last year and i thought shots in the dark was good when it dropped but uh let you was better and it was even a solo song it was a great performance it was a great mix of pop and hip-hop at the same time one thing i gotta say these last like four three tracks chill out okay that's pr that's the best track run on the album i, I will say v12 been growing on me and been growing on me more. I know I said this in the album reaction, which you better go watch. You should have already watched that. Um, uh, this song's been growing on me, but even the last couple of days, I've been loving this song more. I will put it at great. I don't think it's top tier, goaded Ian Dior, but this is already up a t this is already up a tier than where I would have put it yesterday. So V12 growing on me. I think Uzi's verse is good. I think V12 is just a better heartbreaker or options in my opinion. I love that song, good single to release, obviously, so, like I said, whenever you got Uzi feature on your album, that is a W. Won't play V12 because, again, I already heard that shit for months. Thought it was very catchy song, even though uh, when I heard it at first, I wasn't, like, mind blown. It was different because it had more of a trap instrumental, and then the drums kind of built up into the, the chorus. I thought MGK's verse uh, started off weird, ended up being super cool. My least favorite Travis Barker collab on the album. I, that might be a hot take just because I think this is the most popular one uh, just because of the features on it. But I like this. I like Ian's more chill parts. The song has an interesting dynamic. I, feel so alone in I love that part. Best part of the song. I'm going to put it at great. Almost good though. It's the worst in the great category so far, I will say, but I do think it is a little better than good. It's about in between, I would say. Um, let's keep going. We're gonna go to Fallen. This is goaded. Again, at the end of the album, I love the acoustic guitar. That, that's that's my shit. That's the underrated one on the album. That's the song that's hitting for me right now, okay? Okay, Regret up next. Um, where should we put this at? This song is interesting. I think it's a little bit forgettable, but Ian's performance is what keeps it alive, so... Ah, and the song's good. It's another one you listen to at the album. I'm gonna sneak it in good. It's almost mid. I think that's because of the beat. I'm not gonna lie, the beat is is mid. The beat's mid. I think Ian's performance is good, so I, I'll put it there above. Because when you listen to it, it's, it's an enjoyable song. It's another kind of more upbeat, kind of chill song. Okay, next up, Heavy, kind of a sleeper. Yeah, that, that part's fire. Kind of a uh, darker song. This one reminds me of something off like I'm Gone, maybe. Um, I find this song pretty catchy, I'm not gonna lie. I I'm gonna put it at great. Uh, I, I think uh, that's a good spot uh, to put it. That one might be another sleeper. I don't see a lot of people talking about heavy a crazy amount. The last two are interludes. Now, when I was listening to the album, uh, it doesn't, or at least on Apple Music, or for me anyway, it does not say interlude yet. And Spotify, when I was watching someone else react to the album, it said interlude. So the last two, Sinking, which was towards the end of the album, and then Dark Angel, which was on the first half of the album, were interludes. The reason I bumped the album to a 10 is because there is two interludes that are good. Dark Angel, I will say, is mid. Almost a skip. And the thing about this, though, because it's an interlude, I can still say Ian Dior has never missed. That being said, Sinking Interlude is great. Um, I didn't even know this was an interlude when we were listening to the album. I mean, I guess now, I, you know, with more listens and I, I see that it is uh, an interlude and I kind of get that now. Um, but shit, I don't treat it like an interlude. Uh, it's kind of, another album that does that is uh, Fighting Demons for Juice. I really like the Juice Speaks, which is like the freestyle. I don't know why, I just love the beat. I love listening to that song. I don't even treat it like an interlude. It, does, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the song hits. I said Sinking is more of a late night vibe. Whatever. Just so many different styles to pr please everyone of Ian Dior fan. I mean, he can literally do 
anything, and I love that, man. Look for my comment down below. Maybe I made some changes to it a couple weeks later. If not, fill out the tier list yourself. I got the... I got the link in the description. Thank you for all the support on the Ian Dior videos. Go watch the reaction if you haven't. And I will stop milking on to better things now. So go enjoy the album. I really am enjoying it. So uh, yeah, peace out everyone. Thank you for watching.